That's not going to roll with Yeah. 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 Would I be your first choice? Okay. remember, you don't get to speak. We have come together in this beautiful place to celebrate the marriage of Elizabeth Pratt and Michael Bergstrom. It is an honor to be with these families and friends here today. Mike and Beth particularly wanted to invite you to the Sierra Nevada because of the potent natural attractions of this part of the world. We gather on the banks of the sacred Tuolumne River, where for many years John Muir gathered his club of Sierra lovers right here for many years. There may very well be magic in this place and it could also well be that the magic sticks to those people who are open to it. The granite, <laughs> the granite peaks of Yosemite's high country have inspired people for generations and they serve today as a solid cathedral to sanctify a powerful love. Rock of ages, still rolling, keep it rolling. As we listen to the music of the Tuolumne River, I'm reminded of the words of Saint Arship. Marconi played the mamba. Listen to the radio. Don't you remember? We built this marriage. We built this marriage on Family and friends from far and near have gathered here to witness and participate in the joining of Beth and Mike. They wish to thank those locals and returnees who know Yosemite well and those who have made the pilgrimage to our cathedral for the first time for coming through smoke and flame <laughs> to be here as witnesses. Uh, as they transition to life as newlyweds, you being here with them now will always mean a great deal. People in place make a strong foundation from which to explore a new life together. What a story these two are living. 27 years late, they have loved each other since they were kids, but the perfect timing hasn't come together until now. Trusted friends who shared a great deal but I had to wait until just now to share everything. The modern miracles of Facebook and Skype have wrought a miracle in, in the method of modern love. Just, just a small town girl living in a lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Just a city boy, <laughs> born and raised northwest of Boston. He took the midnight train going anywhere. Can how, I the guitar solo? <laughs> how wonderful that we get to witness this high point in such a fairy tale. How much more remarkable it must be to be a character living this fantastical romance. We are actually seeing two huge dreams come true together today. Here are some of Beth's thoughts when she, from when she was younger. 
Oh, Mikey, what a pity you don't understand. You take me by the heart when you take me by the hand. It's guys like you, Mikey. Oh, what you do, Mikey. Don't break my heart, Mikey. He did that, though. He did that, yeah. <laughs> Mike has always thought of Beth as special and unique and a temptress. Shameless hussy. <laughs> Some of his thoughts included uh, these lines. She loves to laugh. She loves to sing. She does everything. She loves to move. She loves to groove. She loves to loving things. <laughs> but then uh, both of them agree. You put the boom boom into my heart. You send my soul sky high when the loving starts. Jitterbug into my brain. Goes a bang, bang, bang till my feet do the same. You had to work in Wham, didn't you? <laughs> Their relationship now might be best summarized from the ancient Sanskrit texts of the Jean Bon show V. We've got to hold on <laughs> to what we've got. Doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We've got each other, and that's a lot for love. We'll give it a shot. Take my hand, we'll make it, I swear. We're living on a prayer. Marriage is a great commitment, not to be taken lightly. <laughs> marriage is joy and marriage is work. Being married is worth the effort that's required for the rewards are many and are endless. Sealing their commitment in a place of such beauty adds an important depth to their vows. A wedding ceremony is an outward form for broad sharing. To be true, it must represent some, something inner and real, a personal union which might be observed from the outside but which only a depth of love can create and mutual loyalty fulfill. To endure, the marriage of these two must be a consecration of each to the other and of both to the wider community of which they are a part. Humility and giving must always be watchwords in marriage. Communication is vital. Malcolm, your turn. Hey, listen, before I forget to say this, I've absolutely adored Beth over the years. I was on the board of Yosemite Association when she came to work for Yosemite Association. And when she walked into the room, the room was transformed. There was an intelligence, a playfulness, a wildness, a sense of fun. And I don't know how somebody keeps that one alive over these years, but you've been really good at it. I was, I was thinking that I shouldn't say this. <laughs> but I can't stop myself. Since I've last seen Beth, she's made two major acquisitions, a tattoo and a husband. <laughs> One of them we know is permanent. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I was thinking about this until I met... Can I call you Mikey? You can call me anything you like. <laughs> so when I, when I met Mike, and there's something about this relationship that's rooted deep. It's rooted deep. There was a marvelous statement that Nietzsche made, that love is not what makes a marriage work, it's friendship. And there's something in this friendship and this long-standing knowing of each other that's very, very encouraging. Mike was arguing about a dowry earlier. <laughs> and I thought I would present the dowry. Okay. That Beth has been, dowry is misunderstood. Dowry is not something that the family pays to get rid of the woman. <laughs> <laughs> dowry is something that the family raises to give the, the, the groom and his family to take care of that woman, to make sure that her, her, she's secure, to make sure she's well taken care of. Beth has been collecting a dowry for many years, and it's her friendships. This is what Beth has to offer you, and this is what we have to offer you is our friendships, and, and you're welcome to it, dear friend. So, you know, Beth wanted me to say something wise. And there's nothing like somebody asking you to say something wise to put you on tilt. So I've been trying to think of what in the world do I know that you couldn't talk me out of in five minutes. Here's what I think I know. There's an African explorer's expression that what you, wonder, what you worry about when you go into the Africa what you, is the lions and the rhinoceroses. What gets you in the end is the gnats. Take care of the gnats. When the, if, if, if the gnats are taken care of, the lions will take care of themselves. 
The other thing that I know is that the root of all unhappiness is comparison. That's from Kierkegaard. And there's this sense of what a perfect life should be. Nobody's going to lead it. Just enjoy the time, just enjoy the self. Don't try to make each other into somebody that you're not. Just have fun with each other. And just, and, and, and the friendship that'll get you through, friendship is acceptance. Friendship is not, friendship is accepting each other in, in all of your imperfections. And, and just enjoy yourself in the present. So this institution of marriage, that we stand here, and, and e even though this is not the typical marriage, even though it's not the typical place for it, the old world bides. In the old days, the, a, a young woman in ancient Greece and Rome would be in the household and would take care of the household gods, the lares and the panares. That was her job, was to feed the gods. When the groom came to pick up the bride, you would have to alert the, god, the, the gods to the fact that the bride was going somewhere else. So he would come in an ox cart, there'd be a band, there'd be the banging of cymbals. You'd have to alert the gods and wake them up. In modern times, this has been translated into the car with the tin cans in the back of it. <laughs> that the essence of weddings has been noise. And let's just make a whole lot of noise to alert the gods and to, and, and, and to welcome Beth and, and Mike. So make noise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Yeah. Beth, oh. you're up. Okay. okay. We have five bucks on that I'm going to cry, so I'm trying not to. <laughs> oh, I have to stand near you. No. Stand near him. Michael, I am marrying you here, as all these folks know, in my favorite place on earth. Um, these granite peaks, this, these alpine meadows have always made me feel at joy and at peace. Um, but now you do, and that's why I wanted to get married here. And as Taylor said, we've been best friends since you smiled at me when I was eight years old. And um, even though you broke my heart when I was 16, <laughs> um, you influenced me more as an adult from those years, taught me to drive a car, taught me to play basketball, which I beat him at once. Um, but you were such an essential part of my childhood. The reason I love science fiction and sports cars is because of you. And it has been the most remarkable experience of my life to see that a bond that we've shared, an unusual bond, not only was still there after 27 years, but was stronger than ever. Um, so like Pete, uh, I searched great writers like Bon Jovi and uh, others, <laughs> great poets, plays, to find the perfect quote to capture how I feel about you. Um, but you'll have to all excuse me if the best thing I could come up with was a 16-year-old girl who was in love for the first time and writing in her journal. He is the brightest star in the sky, the one you wish upon and almost feel the warmth that radiates. Mike is a warm spring day, a day when the world feels at peace. He is my life. Or an 18-year-old girl with a broken heart. <laughs> Michael used to make me pastrami sandwiches. He used to go jogging with me and play basketball. But the pastrami sandwiches stick out best in my mind. There was a special way to make them, he said, that took practice. I wish I remembered how to do it. I think about Michael a lot, moving his furniture from his New Hampshire apartment, Mike doing his wham imitation. The memories keep coming. Debbie, and where's Debbie? My friend since high school, asked me the other day if I could marry anybody in the world, who would it be? I answered Michael Bergstrom. I'll probably never see him again, but my thoughts will often wander to Michael and what he is doing with his life. I love you, Mike. Thank you for finding me again. I love you. <laughs> oh, I'm not supposed to kiss you. <laughs> I think they lost the five bucks. I, uh, no, it's not. I'm not tearing up. No, I, there's a debate there. <laughs> okay, your turn, coach. Okay. Um, my Beth. 
Uh, I will open with a quote, um, one that everybody has a copy of. I, I thank you. Um, so I love you because the entire universe has conspired to help me find you again, the second time. Um, that was one that I found online because um, I'm kind of a hopeless romantic. And it was just so fitting considering that all the time that we spent watching science fiction movies and um, when, we were, when we were kids and you would come and sit in the man cave and we'd just, we'd watch 2001 or we'd watch MTV and uh, having, having remembered so many of those experiences from when we were young, um, the, first, the first time I ever saw this little eight-year-old girl sitting in her mother's car coloring, I, I smiled through the wind. I was washing her windshield, and I smiled through the windshield, and something about her eyes, our eyes met, and, and it, was the, it was the strangest connection. Um, and over time, they'd come in and just smile at her again, and she was just the cutest little kid. And her eyes just... Her eyes and then her smile just pierced my, pierced my heart. Um, and then she showed up at my house, one of my sister's friends. I was, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Um, and we became, we became friends uh, long before either of us were in love with each other. Uh, I was obviously much, much older, um, as she continues to remind me. <laughs> but... Um, the fact remains that that for a long time, for during those years, she was kind of my best friend. Um, I cried in her lap once, um, um, and it was it was just the most amazing friendship that I that I've experienced uh, with anybody. I mean, it's looking back, I think about it and say, I mean, this was the person that. Um, this was the person that meant more to me when I was growing up, when I was a young man, than anyone I can imagine. Um, and yes, I did break her heart. Um, and I will spend a number of years trying to make that up to her. Um, you already did. <laughs> the, um, and the way, I, the way I think about Beth now um, the first time I saw her when I flew to San Francisco for the first time, we were about 75 yards apart and I saw her across the airline terminal and my heart just melted. Uh, I thought I was going to fall down. And as she walked towards me, she smiled and, and I looked into her eyes and every time I look into her eyes now, she takes my breath away just a little bit and I just, I can't imagine not living the rest of my life with her um, and having had the opportunity to spend so much time with her now I'm I'm deeply indebted to Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> and, and my sister Julie um, and Julie will know why um, and what I promise to Beth and what I promise to all of you Beth's dearest friends is that I will as Malcolm asked I will take care of her I will, I will take care of your daughter. I will make her happy. She will never, she will never feel hurt. She will never, she will never feel fear. I will do everything in my power to make sure that the rest of her life is as wonderful as it can be. My Beth, my love, my life. And I will finish with, in 1983, I bought this book. Uh, I, I love science. Um, I actually have the sales receipt here from June of 1983 when I purchased this book. Um, Carl Sagan, we, we spent many hours sitting and watching Cosmos episodes. Um, she believes in evolution because of me, by the way. Um, and I drive fast and get speeding tickets because of you. <laughs> and a parking ticket in the Audi, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, the... Um, I found this, the, the dedication of this book uh, by Dr. Sagan was made for his wife, Ann Dryan. Um, and I just thought this was the most, um, I thought this kind of said it all about the way I feel about 
um, uh, Beth. And it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase because I need to change the last word. But uh, in the vastness of space and the immensity of time, it is my joy to share a planet and an epoch with Beth. I love you. <clears throat> Keep it clean. <laughs> G-rated. Uh, let's hold hands. Yeah, perfect. Just like that. Do you, Beth, prom promise to love, honor, and cherish this man, Mike? I do. Do you, Mike, promise to love, honor, and cherish this woman, Beth? Yes, I do. Rings are an ancient symbol, blessed and simple, round like the sun, like the eye, like the arms that embrace, like cycling season, <laughs> rather, like the cycle of seasons. <laughs> they are circles, except for biopaste chain rings. <laughs> for love that is given comes back round again and again. Therefore, may these symbols remind you that your love, like the sun, illumines, that your love, like the eye, must see clearly, that your love, like arms that embrace, is a grace upon this world. As the world lives on through seasons, love endures through changes. Okay, this hand right here. You're gonna go first. Okay. okay, put it on right now. And you say, with this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. <laughs> I've been okay. gaining weight. <laughs> okay, this hand. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. Mike and Beth have declared their love and purpose before this gathering and have made their pledge each to the other symbolized by the holding of hands and the giving of rings. It is time to pronounce this official. Let all others honor them in the threshold of their house. May they carry into their marriage the beauty and the tranquility of our precious earth and keep in it always the sense of exploration and the peace and intimacy they have shared here. May you find here the good beginnings of married life. May all grace attend you. May happiness pervade your lives together. May your home be forever a place of peace and fulfillment. May the pikas and lions honor your union. May you always see yourselves on Campagnolo and in tandem on top of the Strava list. I now pronounce you husband and wife, bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. You may kiss. <clears throat> Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. <laughs> Streetlights, people. Peace. Whoa, whoa. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. Bio paste thing. Well, Come you on. know, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like 80s. Well, we're, we are 80s. Off you go. Right. Off you go, Mr. and Mrs. right here. And right here. And the families and the ring bearers and our speaker, distinguished speaker. The newlyweds want to make sure that you all join them at the mobile mini marts. <laughs> you tell me when. Uh, it's called a Mayan triple. Okay, when? Beth, I can't tell you how beautiful your day is. Your you, your beautiful self. You were transcendent, Mike. I just can't tell you how happy I am that you have married our Kathy. You are a magnificent couple, and I can't wait to spend many, many, many more years as your friend. I want to say I wish you both lots of happiness and many years together and no more dogs. Um. Best of luck to, to Beth and, and Mike, and may God be with you both. What about the dowry? The dowry's probably in the car. If not, it's back at the house. We'll, we'll look for it. Uh, you go first. Me go first. Yes. Okay, are we on? Yeah. Okay, so Beth, all right, every 10 years you get me out here, whether it's a marriage or it's, um, you know, just a tour of the land. Thanks so much. You are a living tour of this land. <laughs> and. 
So from me, I am now hovering at 95%. This is going to be a beautiful thing, and I hope so. And I will keep the file open, but I'll put it in cold storage. <laughs> Do you want to uh -oh. say anything? No. Oh, no. and Deb and I are going to split. We're going to share the next decade if we have yes, to. Yes, we'll share it. Yeah, because you know what yeah. I mean. Oh, come on. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, big count. I like it. I like it. And one, two, three, big count.